<laughs> I don't get it. How am I supposed to defeat this boss? Yo, dog, you gotta hit circle, circle, triangle, square, circle, right button. No, no, no. Left button, right button, up, down, circle, triangle, B. There is no B on the control pad, you idiot. Yo, dog, you suck at video games. Listen to me, you fucked up porcupine. I'm an echidna. Whatever. Uh, why did I do his voice and his voice? Anyway, whatever. I've seen things. I've been in the jungles. I have dreams. Where a snail's moving along the edge of a straight razor. What's that to me? <laughs> Oh, that was a fucking stupid ending. Whatever, I've done this take like ten times! You better be entertained! Tolstoy Kafkaevsky here. Totally making an ass on myself on the camera. Totally making an ass of myself on camera. Why don't I just say it right? The not yet ready for prime time, not yet ready for partnership player um, is here to bring you a review of a tactical pen! This is not one of them. Um, this is a pen that I got at my drive through at work. In case you're wondering, I don't ask, would you like fries with that? I ask, how many medications are you looking for? Um, and it says Northrop Grumman on it. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar, who don't live on the uh, East Coast, who aren't familiar with what Northrop Grumman is, uh, my grandfather actually used to work at the company that Northrop Grumman bought out. It was Westinghouse, founded by Mr. Westinghouse, who's possibly, arguably, the first um, uh, a partisan of one of the, 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 the very first formatting wars, which the formatting wars actually go back a hundred years if you look at it, the first format people were arguing about was electricity. Ain't even shitting you. And we had Nikola Tesla and Westinghouse who argued for the proponents of either DC or AC, I forget, I, yeah, I don't know, salt is salty, you know. Science to me, but I remember that Edison, who was either DC or AC, I forget, used to use the electricity current, the, the format that Westinghouse supported to torture small animals like a Victorian sideshow in the streets of whatever fucking city to prove that it was dangerous to people. He even built the electric chair off that principle to prove that it was dangerous to people. And the retarded thing is that even all the way back then, the Americans were like, Oh, look, he has made a, a chair for killing people. Jolly good, sir. Like, anything that was new, they were like, yeah, some of her jolly good. I mean, you could tell someone, like, your iPod is made from, like, slave wage labor in Honduras, and they'll be all like, I like me some iPod. Anyway, so, um, basically, someone dropped one of my pen. Normally, I carry, like, G2 Pilot. Do I have any here? No. Uh, normally, I carry, like, a bandolier of G2 Gel Pilot pens. When writing is, is ubiquitous to your job, you carry those kind of pens. I mean, it's like cops. I understand why you choose, like, you know, Glock, because it's reliable. You know, the, the plastic Glock model, the, the standard issue, you know, whatever, like the Colt 1911. I understand why that 45 caliber is trusty. I understand that, you know, when you have my job line and you got to write everything down, that you like to carry a lot of pens. But somebody dropped one of my pens, and she was nice enough, and she was in the drive-thru, and she was like, here, you can have this pen. And it was really nice when I got it. It's like a little twist pen uh, stuff. Wow, we went from lighters to pens. It's getting interesting! Um, this lighter in my pocket, I, I just put it in my, in my suit pocket, and the fucking top came open. So, I mean, it doesn't light anymore, because now all the fuel has been depleted. I shall refuel it soon. Well, I mean, you know, just, yeah. Um, anyway, so basically, yeah, she gave me this pen. It was a nice pen to begin with, but now you can see it's starting to get beat up. Um, and it still writes. I should have had paper for this review, for an obvious reason. Damn. Can I have paper? Oh, come on. Here we go. This is a receipt for... Ah, oh, this was a Christmas gift. Perfect. Yeah, so you see here. It still writes. Ignore that! Anyway, so yeah, it still writes. Um, and uh, I don't really carry it anymore because I find that quite easily you can lose it. Every time someone loses a pen in the drive-thru, then I have to, like, slide this in there and I have to, like, pass it off to the person through the bullet crap... Bullet crass... <laughs> bulletproof glass. Never had to buy a whip my bulletproof glass. Um... Anyway, and uh, half the time they either lose it or steal your pen. I've actually had someone in the drive-thru finish writing with one of my gel pens, look me in the eye and go... Like, what? And I was just like, and everyone else was like, why didn't you ask for your pen back? I'm like, dude, it's a customer. I'm not going to ask for my pen back. Anyway, so, um... Yeah, but basically, half the time when I'm at my work, I mean, not half the time, but there have been a few instances, and I'm not going to get into it, I'm not going to tell you where I work, you can figure out that I'm working with drugs, I'm not going to tell you what chain I'm working with, I fear, I feared from the beginning, and I fear now, that somewhere, someone is going to find my videos on the internet, and they're just going to, like, look at it, and they're going to be like, well, we got to fire you now, which would be totally wrong, but, I mean, wrongful termination, 18 ways to Sunday, but that, that's corporatism for you, that's America! 
Yes, that's America. Anyway, so I read it. So, um, yeah, I had iced coffee this time. Decided to mix it up. I wanted me some living nice and refreshing. Anyway, I've been working for six days. This is my only day off. Be grateful. And what was I going to say? Oh, right. So sometimes, you know, you have an interaction down at uh, your place of work. And considering where I work, and believe it or not, um, true story, um, for legally in Maryland, among most other states, but Maryland, which is a really anti-gun state, um... And I'm like a hardcore Democrat. Like, most people know that. I, I, I'm i sort of in between, you know. I mean, I, I see, I see you know, the good details in, in both ideologies of, you know, conservatism and liberalism and progressivism, you know. But I'm very much Democrat, except for gun control. I'm like, don't you touch my guns. I'm, you know, from my dead, cold hands. Oh, I dropped it. Oh, well, it's not my hands anymore. Um, yeah, so one of the number one reasons, for, even in Maryland, which is it's hard to get a license for concealed weapon carry, one of the number one reasons, and this is not a real gun, this is a CO2 pistol, if you're wondering why I'm like, you know, and it's unloaded, I know that it's, there, it's the magazine, I know that it's very much unloaded, there is no C2 in there anymore, I fired it clean, so if you're wondering why Tolstoy's going like, ah, ah, then, you know, don't, don't freak out, but it does look like, much, very much like a real gun, it even sort of cocks, but as you can see, that, that's actually kind of unrealistic, that chamber's up too far, right? I mean, am I right? I mean, am I right? Am I wrong? I'm wrong! Okay. So, um, right, one of the number one reasons to, if I have to say this fact one more time, one of the number one reasons to get a concealed carry weapon permit, CCW, in Maryland, the top reason is being police. Any kind of fascist entity, if you're like, I'm Homeland Security, and I see me some darkies, and I gotta beat the darkies with the end of my pistol, then you can, for some reason, get a license. But if you're like, I'm a concerned citizen, and I live in a neighborhood where there were 13 homicides last week, and I would just feel better denied, you know? So, um, one of the second reasons is actually being a pharmacist. And I, in my days, I, in my days, in my year of working as a pharmacy technician, I have heard some stories. I mean, I'm talking about, you know, I left like 10 minutes and 10 minutes later somebody came with a gun and shot the other person. Not really. This is a story that I've heard through other people. I've heard of pharmacists getting stabbed. I've heard, and in my time there, at, at my place of work, I have had people, you know, who have scared me from their reaction to, we can't fill this prescription, this is a fake prescription, we have to call your doctor, why are you passing off a fake, fake prescription, you're trying to get too much of this filled, you're an addict, what the fuck, you know, all this stuff. Sometimes the reaction is, we hate you, and sometimes like, I'm gonna kill you! And when they say that, I just wish I had me some of that. You know what I'm saying? But of course, that's against the policies of the place I work with. They won't even let me carry a knife in there, and it's, that's not even for defense, that's just for basic, you know, like, the front end gets box cutters, we don't. So I'm sitting there with, like, my keys or, like, a pen trying to open up a box of jars for medication. And I'm like, <laughs> trying to, like, open it. And I'm like, can I just carry a knife? Seriously, I haven't asked him yet. But, I mean, that would just make some plain bloody sense. So anyway, sometimes for functionality, for fun, for functionality, and self-defense, maybe, maybe. This is arguable. But whatever. This was a gift to me. I had looked into them ever since I bought a, a gun magazine. I saw it at work. And normally I'm, I'm not into buying those gun magazines where they're like, you know, you're not a true man unless you shot 18 darkies and hung them. You know, because sometimes that's one of the big problems I find with the gun culture. The reason I can't really go to the range. Uh, I am a uh, responsible citizen who happens to own firearms. I would love to, like, live on a ranch so that I could, you know, go out with a Colt 45 or with a, um, what I really own is a, is a, uh, a Ruger, um, 14 ranching rifle, which, and I, a little 223, I'd like to bring her out, you know, take some shots at some cans or something. I like to teach myself to shoot. That's why I really like CO2 pistols because in Maryland you can legally own these and do some target practice, but the problem is, is that oftentimes they're, they're not that accurate. And I've seen some good shooters who know how to compensate for their lack of accuracy, who fired a couple times, realize that it's like leaning to the left and that they can, you know, um, correct that, but I'm not that good a shooter. Trying to teach myself how to shoot. Um, don't really want to go to the range. Even gun shows. I love gun shows. Gun and knife shows. It's like Christmas for me. You know what I mean? But, um, and this is a true story. A family member of mine was at a local gun show in Maryland, and, um, he was just trying on boonie hats. We're talking about, like, you know, boonie hats from, not the Iraq War, the Gulf War, the Persian, you know, the Persian Gulf War? Oh, shit. I'm, like, review, re, um, revealing my ignorance. The Gulf War did not happen in the Persian Gulf. I just mixed the two facts in my head together. Okay, so anyway, he was at the, he was just looking at old hats, and the guy behind the counter was a redneck. What am I supposed to tell you? He wasn't. There weren't a lot of rednecks there. I'm not offended by rednecks. Yeah, no, you know what? I'm offended as much by, like, inner-city ghetto snipes as I am rednecks. Both extremes are bad. 
I can't stand yo dog boo the boo as much as I can't stand and I guess that makes me a picky asshole, but whatever. Anyway, so um Right, so you try on hats and um the guy's like, well, it's, you know, you just gotta find the size that you really like. And I was like, yeah, it's kind of like Cinderella, except for, you know, there's, there's no kissing involved. And then the guy leaned over to my family member and went, I bet you it's Obama doing the kissing. Who the fuck brought that up? No, not everything is a venue for your racist hate of President Barack Obama. Oh, God. Anyway, so, um, I can't get to the range as often. How did I get off track? Wasn't this a review of something? I don't even go to the range. I've never been to the range once, as often. I have some friends who um, say we should go down to the NRA range in Virginia because I know that there's no rifle ranges in the area, and I'd like to buy a handgun, maybe a Ruger Mach 3, because it's a highly machined target pistol. It's not really for self-defense. It's not a combat pistol, but it can very much accuracy teach you how to shoot. I'm trying to remember where I was going with this. Something about... I'm a very... I don't believe in, you know... Sometimes you need self-defense. And you cannot carry a firearm. In fact, I find that most American laws, and this goes back to my, um, my speech about fascism. Have you read it yet? Okay. Um, this goes back to my speech about fascism. I believe that in America, we make laws on purpose to protect the attacker, not the victim, to help gangs grow in America, because, and not too much. It's almost like how the Germans wanted the ad hocs. I, I, I call them ad hocs. It was actually like a word for what they were in German, but I mean, I, I just heard someone call them ad hocs once, as needed. They created um, like a policeman of the police guards of Jews to police the Jews in the ghettos and the camps, as if they themselves were not going to end up killed by the Germans, but, you know, for whatever reason, it's psychotic. They helped the Germans kill other Jews. The, the you know, I forget what their name were, the, the, you know, Jewish guard or whatever. Just like that, the elites of our society have kind of helped foster gangs and, and, and crime and, and punks who just think it's okay to commit petty crimes, including assaults, attempted murders, you know, reckless endangerment, all because... They know they can get away with it because they've tied the hands of the citizens behind their back. They know we can't carry guns. They know we can't carry knives. And even if you live in an area where you can carry guns, using a gun is not permitted. I mean, and I've heard so many cases. I've heard a case where it was like a 300-pound man charging at a woman with a knife and he was intoxicated. And a good citizen deployed a 45 caliber Colt firearm, the 1911 model, and shot him like six times. Now remember, this is a hell of a lot of lead because it's a 45 caliber shot, it carries a lot of weight with it, and he went, you know, he had to shoot this guy six fucking times, but the guy weighed 300 pounds and was drunk. He wasn't coming down fast. He was like trying to bring down a bull elephant. So he shot him, and the shooter ended up going to prison. Because they're like, well, how did you really need to use that much force? The man has a right... No! Once you are intoxicated and have deployed a knife and charge at a woman, you have sacrificed your rights to personal safety and a fucking conversation. So I believe that in our country, we foster, we help, we owe, you know, you, you poor, you poor Rodney King, you drove and broke the law. You could have, you know, reckless endangerment. You charged at a police officer. Poor, poor Rodney King. You deserve to get your ass whipped. You know, and it's like, the elites have helped foster that with the media and with just crooked laws and with, you know, with, with, with these, uh, just, just so that they, it's like what they said in 1984, the war is always constant and it is always on its citizens. They do it so that me, as a good citizen, every day I walk to work, think, if a punk comes into the pharmacy and, like, jumps the counter, you know, what do I do? Well, I've always thought there's a bunch of glass bottles of medication in the back, and that was a, that's an honest thought. What am I supposed to say? If someone goes nuts, which is a very big possibility, I'm not paranoid, crime happens. I always give people a benefit of the doubt, but there's just been some people where I've been like, hey, you know, I just don't trust you, son. And if that were to happen, they'd probably charge me with, like, attempted murder and they'd throw me in prison. So I have to go to work terrified every day, and that terror keeps my mind off what the hands of the Illuminati are doing. Yeah, 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 I know. I've gotten real paranoid and politically charged in a video that wasn't supposed to be that way, but what do you expect? You gave me coffee and an unlimited time, <laughs> an unlimited time limit. This is what's going to happen. Okay. I don't even know what time period we're in. I've lost...
track of all time, but let's get down to what we were going to talk about. Um, I saw this on a defense map. That's where I was going. Shit. I saw this in a, uh, a home defense magazine, and they talk a lot about, you know, if someone breaks into your house, you might teen times on the legs, and then burn. But besides that, they had some interesting uh, advertisements for some stuff I'd love to get. One was like a new mace gun that fires, like, shots of mace. Look really good. Uh, and there have been some situations in my life that I will not discuss with anyone other than the people that it happened with or close family members where I needed something like that and did not have it. Hell, I had something that I could have used and I could not use it. And unfortunately that ended up best for everyone because one of my close friends made a very good decision, which was to run. Um, but anyway, basically I saw something for a tactical pen. What is a tactical pen? Everyone asks, what is it? Everyone asks Tolstoy. Well, supposedly it's a pen made out of um, reinforced steel that could possibly be used as a weapon. Now, if I tried to stab this pen, which is not made of reinforced steel into something, would it go in? Possibly. But would it be as good as something that's made of reinforced steel? No. Is a reinforced steel pen marketed as a last-ditch effort of self-defense really cool? Yes, it is. So, um, we're going to talk about it. Now, a friend of mine um, saw this on the internet. Uh, you know, it's like, that's a perfect gift right there. A gift is something you won't buy for yourself, but you've always kind of wanted one. You know what I mean? And he uh, invested in a CRKT. It's called a Tau Pen. And if you look at the box here, it's it's packaged in the classic CRKT, you know, box, which is um, recyclable and earth-friendly, which is just really nice. Columbia River Knife and Tools is a good company. They make good stuff. Their stuff is produced in China, unlike most knife and weapon manufacturers in the United States who cater to... But I respect them for creating their stuff, you know, inside America of high-grade parts. Maybe the parts come from China, assembled in America, whatever. Um, but still, really nice implement. Box is pretty simple. Not much else I can show you. So we open it up, and the first thing we see is that. And that's just... It comes with its own case. That is just... That's just grand. It's just the bee's knees. It's tops. So, um... Yeah, and then on the inside you get, um... A little pamphlet with some information. And this pamphlet goes in... Mm, holding it upside down. Very good. Tau Pen CRKT. Um, it talks a lot about, uh, on the inside, the different ways to use it. And I really don't have time to mention all that information. On the back it shows three frames. And, um... It actually, I mean, I'm talking like it goes into detail on this front page, you know. Uh, Alan notes, these pen designs are evolutions of the custom tactical pens I have offered successfully for many years. However, they are very different from the other... Uh, at the lowest level of engagement, the impact crown on the cap can be used to strike the assailant to the head. This is a little overdone. The per the uh, This is a little overdone. The problem, I, I think, with the self-defense community, or the I, you know, Americans in general, I think, have just gone a little nuts from action movies. You know, it's like we've been taught this bullshit about, like, okay, for, for example, pressure point kung fu. No. I, I'm sorry. There's going to be a whole bunch of you out there going, oh, I've seen it happen because my master at my dojo, Hing Ding Danger, said it could ha No, dude. It doesn't go down like that. In the movies, nobody, you know... Nobody, it's like in the movies, in reality, there's no such thing as a knife fight, for example. Go to um, nononsenseselfdefense.com. I give that my official Tolstoy seal of approval. I have researched self-defense for many years. I have been in situations where I needed some of that information, and I've never taken... I did take karate when I was very young, but, you know, never mind. I've never done that. I don't lift weights. I'm not a kung fu master. I, I ain't never been a street fighter. I've been the Marines. But I can tell you that that's not actually what self-defense really entails. I mean, just to give you a, a basic example, what is the number one thing that will deter an attacker from home invasion or a prowler from home invasion? I'll give you three seconds to answer. Did you say a big fucking dog? If not, you failed. The number, well, really the truth is, is that and a reinforced door. The a majority, according to police reports, the majority of home invasions come from someone kicking in your door, you know, when they don't think you're home, in the middle of the night, when they don't think neighbors are watching. Run in, grab the TV, get out, get your crack fix. You know what I'm saying? But if they go to kick in that door and they can't kick it in, they might just leave, because they realize that thump is already waking people up, and they don't have time to try again. But the sound of will scare anybody away. Why would they want to go in? You know, I mean, this is not the movies. In reality, there's no such thing as a knife fight. Nobody's going to go like, I challenge you, and then like, ding, 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 ding. That's not going to happen. If they really wanted to knife you, you will not have a chance to deploy any weapon or go, oh, come at me, bro. They're going to walk up when you're not looking and go, hey, buddy, I hey, man, you got change for that. I mean, really, look at some videos of some captured assailants on, you know, who are purse, you know, snatchers or muggers or prison attacks. They're not going to tell you that they're coming. 
And so my point is, is this is a little overdone where they're like, well, if you use the, the, the pen to strike them at the joints of the eye, you can disconnect their eye. No, you can't, dude. If they're attacking you, and it's for, I mean, we gotta remember, there's different reasons why interpersonal violence happens. Are they attacking you because you slept with their girlfriend? Because in that case, they may actually just present you. They may just want a straight up fist fight, and that's not really a real big deal. I mean, unless they really want to kill you. I mean, if they're in like a fit of rate, anyway, are they mugging you? Because in that case, they don't want to kill you. They, you're, you're an easy pick. They want you to take off your clothes, give them your wallet, and go away. They're not gonna shoot you. Now, are they fucking crazy? Then they may just. And if they're crazy, they're not going to sit there and let you apply pressure kung fu and, and stuff like that. And that's the point, is that when you don't have time to get that out, when you cannot carry that, when you cannot carry that, a last-ditch effort, go for the eyes. And don't stop, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not endorsing attacking people. I'm not giving you legal advice. I'm not even giving you attack. I'm just telling you what I would do in that personal situation. And I can't carry these at my job. And well... It's a pen. It does a legal function. Most weapons laws are focused against what they quote, and they use this, this, this phrase commonly in um, common law through the United States, quote, has no other legal purpose than to kill. I can't go, oh, I'm going to open a box with my gun. You know, that's not going to work. This has a legal purpose other than to kill. I have used this only for legal purposes, never to kill. Okay, but um, this has the mass majority. This is the most legalist of purpose. Legalist. So let's, um, let's, it shows you like three different ways you could strike an attacker. I'm not going to read those to you. So anyway, let's take a look at the pen. Nice case, really nice case. CRKT in a little, is it plastic? Yeah, it's plastic, but it looks metal. And it's very nice. Like they didn't even, they didn't need to do that, but it, it's nice. It's like, it, it's a, mm. so, you know, you open it up, you get that. You get uh, a little bit of a carrying case kind of up here, some netting. And then you see the CRKT pen right there. Take it out of the box. We're not going to review this. Take it out of the um, the lovely packaging, and you've got, um, well, you've got a pen. CRKT pen. The first thing I guess you notice is that it's very heavy by comparison to other pens. It's very heavy. See what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, and it's got these kind of screws here, and there's a reason for that. The pen clip is heavy, heavy duty. That's another thing. See? Not really heavy duty. Heavy duty. Hefty, hefty, hefty. Hefty, hefty, hefty. hefty, hefty. So, um, yeah, this is what they were talking about at the, at the, um, in the instructions, the crown, or whatever they call that. It's like a weird little symbol. It almost, I mean, I can't even figure out what the symbol is. It's not CRKT. I wonder if this is, this is a guy's signature, or if they just took a little bit of the resin of the stamp and kind of just made, like, a weird little symbol. But the point is, is they're suggesting that you, in a less than, you know, less than lethal approach or something. No, dude, you're not going to have time stabbing with the tip. But, uh, either way, they're suggesting that, I'm going to do it on this box. I don't care, I'm going to show you. That, that this blunt end... Hell yeah! Now, by comparison, nope, nope. I had to bludgeon that in. Two strikes, not good enough. And they also suggest this top could be used as a, a baton. That's dumb. I'm not gonna hit somebody with my mini baton. That was fun. That's really fun. I love doing that. Um, I think I may have like mm, dented my desk. Anyway, so as opposed to most pens with a cap where you can just pull them apart, this one requires that you unscrew. You screw it in nice and tight, and it is very secure. It will not come off. So, but you have to unscrew, which takes a lot of time. If you have a lot of things to write, and you have, like, every day I have a click pen, that's why I can't really do this. I can, because I can open it and close it with one hand. Much like my knife, I need a one-handed, you know, opening and closing pen. I can, when I'm, you know. So you can unscrew it like that, and then re-screw it. And now you have the most, you know, I suppose dangerous aspect is the pen. Now, I have tested this out using the ballpoint pen on a cardboard box. The penetration was very nice. You would not get that kind of penetration with, um, oh, you wouldn't get that kind of penetration with, um, something like that. Even if I extended the tip. Problem is, I believe this messes the end up. Yeah, I probably should have taken care. You can get refills for these. I don't know if the ball and the ballpoint pen can be replaced, but... It, it, it really only writes half the time now. Well, that's not bad, but it, it seems like the writing's faded, like it's already running out of ink. I think I personally damaged it, see what I'm saying? It, you, know, well, you can't really make that out, but I think I may have damaged the ballpoint pen. It still remains a very valuable um, asset, and I'm afraid to stab it one more time, because again, it even says, in the gravest extreme. In extreme situations, the thrusting grip with the pen tip will give penetration. Will give penetration. 
much more smoother. But now that I've done that, will it still write? Huh. Actually, yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, a very nice knife. I actually don't know what the price is. Uh, check out CRKT.com, and you could get um, and you can get uh, a demonstrator get a uh, price quote on that. Um, I was gonna demonstrate this, but to be honest, uh, there's no real need. I'm afraid I'm gonna hurt it more than I already did. And the novelty of having it is really cool. Always wanted one. You know, I mean, you know, it's just to say that I have it. Sometimes you have. There's a lot of things that I own. I mean, just to say that I have it. I mean, come on. You know, it's like, uh, it's like, uh, okay. I got a belt buckle, and it's also a knife. Yeah. Wouldn't really ever use the knife for anything. It's the cheapest Chinese shitty shit ever, but can't say it's not cool. Oh, crap. Oh, I tried to reinstart it upside down. There we go. Anyway. So I have now burnt through all of my physical energy. Um, I don't know how long this video was, but uh, I hope you enjoyed my little political rant. Hey, guys, let's uh, try and keep the opinions, or let's just try and keep the debate to a minimum, please, let's not, uh, let's not, you don't agree with me, I'm gonna kill you, let's not, come on, you know. And, uh, don't forget to, uh, don't forget to, to rate and subscribe and comment and click on the advertiser so I can make money. If I make more money, I'll make raw views. You know the deal.